Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Aussie Law, and today we will talk about section 116 of the Australian Constitution. Is this section guaranteeing the freedom of religion in Australia? This video is part of a series about the express rights in the Australian Constitution. We have seen throughout this series how, maybe contrarily to what you would first imagine, the so-called express rights are actually more about limiting the powers of the Commonwealth Parliament rather than granting individual rights. Well, if you turn to section 116 of the Australian Constitution, you will notice that same pattern. Start with the title. Commonwealth not to legislate in respect to religion. There you go, section 116 is not really about granting an individual right, but it's more about limiting the powers of Parliament. I think we should start this video with a point made by Quick and Gary in this respect. They comment that the legislative powers of the federal parliament, they are enumerated in the constitution. They are specific. They have been determined in the text of the Australian constitution. But if you look around, you won't find any grants of power in respect to religion. So section 116 seems to be limiting a power that wasn't originally granted to the Commonwealth Parliament. So what's the reasoning behind having this provision? The commentator said that the strongest argument for the adoption of section 116 was found in the special form of the preamble to the Constitution Act, which recites that the people of the colonies humbly relying on the blessings of Almighty God have agreed to unite in one indissoluble federal Commonwealth. You see, the preamble to the United States Constitution doesn't contain the same words as these. But as Henry Higgins said in one of the conventions to draft the Australian Constitution, despite not having these exact words, the federal parliament in the United States was then allowed to legislate about religion. So if in a country where they didn't have the words of reliance on the blessings of Almighty God, the federal parliament still managed to legislate about religion, how much more likely was it that the Australian Federal Parliament might, owing to the recital in the preamble, be held to possess power with respect to religion? So, at least from this perspective, you can see how the provision exists not necessarily to grant any individual right, but to limit the powers of the Commonwealth to legislate about religion even if there is no real express power given, for example, in section 51 of the Australian Constitution. Okay, I think this is a good introduction, but let's read the rest of the provision. Section 116 says that the Commonwealth shall not make any law for the establishment of any religion, or for imposing any religious observance, or for prohibiting the free exercise of any religion, and no religious test shall be required as a qualification for any office of public trust under the Commonwealth. There are four limits in this section, and this is what I want to focus for the remainder of this video. The federal parliament cannot establish any religion. It cannot impose religious practices. It cannot interfere with the free exercise of religion. And it cannot impose religious tests for the qualification of public offices. But even before we get into that, I still want to make three general comments about this section. This section refers to the federal parliament. It does not affect the states. That means that the states still have residual powers to legislate about religion. Section 116 also talks about any law. So does that mean that executive or administrative actions are not under the influence of section 116? Not really. The High Court has said that although the provision doesn't expressly refer to executive actions, Executive actions can be authorized under an Act of Parliament. We've talked about that already, and you can check it by clicking on the top right corner. So then, if an administrative action authorized under a particular Act of Parliament enters somehow in the scope of this section by establishing a religion or prohibiting the free exercise of religious practices, then that executive action will be invalid. And the other thing is that there has never been one single case where the High Court of Australia has found a law to be inconsistent with section 116 of the Australian Constitution. I'll let this sink in for a moment. Okay, now let's talk about the extent to which Parliament is limited to legislate about religion. 
The first limit is on the establishment of any religion. To establish a religion means the identification of the religious and the civil spheres. That is, to make a law conferring on a particular body the status of being the state or the national religion or church. It is to adopt a religion as an institution of the Commonwealth. That was the gist of Chief Bowick's decision in the Dogs case from 1981. As you know, every time I mention a case or a particular book, you can access it through the links that are provided in the description of the video. And hey, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. So here's a key aspect of this limitation. The Constitution prohibits the federal parliament from getting directly involved in or promoting a religion. In Quick and Garen's words, by the establishment of religion is meant the erection and recognition of a state church or the concession of special favors, titles and advantages to one church which are denied to others. It is not intended to prohibit the federal government from recognizing religion or religious practices. Lambert Moens highlighted the difference between the establishment of religion as per the First Amendment to the United States Constitution and the establishment of any religion in Section 116 of the Australian Constitution. For them, a non-discriminatory law which is directed toward assisting religion generally may violate the American provision but may not be invalid under Section 116. So, Oath of office and the reference to God in the beginning of every legislative session are not prohibited under section 116. And neither are non-discriminatory financial assistance to denominational schools. And neither is the legal recognition to religious denominations to celebrate marriage. Hey, if you are liking the content of this video, just make sure that you click the like button and that you are subscribed to our channel. The second limit relates to the imposition of religious observances. The High Court has never been invited to expressly decide on this limit, but in a sense it relates a bit with this limit that we just explained about the establishment of religion. The Commonwealth Parliament cannot create a state religion and it cannot force religious or non-religious people to engage in certain religious practices. This limit then involves another important feature of section 116. The Constitution aims not only to guarantee the protection and the freedom of religion for those who are believers, but also protects the atheists or the unbelief of those who are not believers in our religion. The third limit is that the federal parliament cannot interfere with the free exercise of religion. The Commonwealth Parliament cannot legislate for the purposes of prohibiting religious practices. Did you notice that I framed that in a purposive manner? That's because of the decision of the High Court in a case called the Jehovah Witnesses case from 1943. In that case, the High Court decided that a law that has no anti-religious purposes can still be valid even if it incidentally affects the free exercise of religion. If a law prevents certain religious practice incidentally, then it could be valid. But a law that aims to prevent and prohibit religious practices that law will infringe on section 116. Since section 116 uses the word for, the High Court has been interpreting it in a purposive manner and has adopted a line of reasoning akin to the proportionality test. In Kruger and Commonwealth from 1997, also known as the Stolen Generations case, the High Court decided that the law must evince an evident purpose of preventing religious practices. Otherwise, it won't be in breach of section 116 of the Constitution. It's one thing to have an effect on religious practices, is another thing to aim at preventing the free exercise of religion. The fourth limitation expressed in section 116 is that the federal parliament cannot impose religious tests for the qualification of public offices. I think the number of this provision is pretty evident. But it means that the Commonwealth cannot demand a particular religious affiliation or even impose a particular religious creed or ethos for someone to work for the Commonwealth. You don't even have to have a religion for you to hold an office of the Commonwealth. There's a fairly recent case that became the biggest authority in this particular matter. The case is Williams and Commonwealth. We already have a video about that, so you can watch it by clicking on the card above. Williams argued that chaplains were holding public offices, and since the majority of them were religious, 
He claimed that that amounted to a religious test being posed as a qualification for holding a public office. As you know, the High Court unanimously rejected that argument. The Honor said that Chaplins had no direct relationship with the Commonwealth at all. Justice Hayden even said that whatever are the bounds of the definition of an office under the Commonwealth, the Chaplins will be outside of it. So I hope you can see that section 116 amounts to a weak form of freedom of religion. It's much more concerned in limiting the legislative powers of parliament rather than guaranteeing an individual right. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again soon. Until then, ciao.